Chapter 37, Zedekiah, son of Josiah, was made king of Judah by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He reigned in place of Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim. Neither he nor his attendants nor the people of the land paid any attention to the words the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah the prophet. King Zedekiah, however, sent Jehuchal, son of Shelemiah, with the priest Zephaniah, son of Maaseiah, to Jeremiah the prophet with this message, Please pray to the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah was free to come and go among the people, for he had not yet been put in prison. Pharaoh's army had marched out of Egypt, and when the Babylonians who were besieging Jerusalem heard the report about them, they withdrew from Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of me, Pharaoh's army, which has marched out to support you, will go back to its own land, to Egypt. Then the Babylonians will return and attack this city. They will capture it and burn it down. This is what the Lord says. Do not deceive yourselves, thinking, The Babylonians will surely leave us. They will not. Even if you were to defeat the entire Babylonian army that is attacking you, and only wounded men were left in their tents, they would come out and burn this city down. After the Babylonian army had withdrawn from Jerusalem because of Pharaoh's army, Jeremiah started to leave the city to go to the territory of Benjamin to get his share of the property among the people there. But when he reached the Benjamin gate, the captain of the guard, whose name was Irijah, son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah, arrested him and said, You are deserting to the Babylonians. That's not true, Jeremiah said. I am not deserting to the Babylonians. But Irijah would not listen to him. Instead, he arrested Jeremiah and brought him to the officials. They were angry with Jeremiah and had him beaten and imprisoned in the house of Jonathan the secretary, which they had made into a prison. Jeremiah was put into a vaulted cell in a dungeon where he remained a long time. Then King Zedekiah sent for him and had him brought to the palace where he asked him privately, Is there any word from the Lord? Yes, Jeremiah replied. You will be handed over to the king of Babylon. Then Jeremiah said to King Zedekiah, what crime have I committed against you, or your officials, or this people, that you have put me in prison? Where are your prophets who prophesied to you, The king of Babylon will not attack you or this land? But now, my lord the king, please listen. Let me bring my petition before you. Do not send me back to the house of Jonathan the secretary, or I will die there. King Zedekiah then gave orders for Jeremiah to be placed in the courtyard of the guard, and given bread from the street of the bakers each day until all the bread in the city was gone. So Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard. Chapter 38 Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pasher, Jehuchal, son of Shelemiah, and Pasher, son of Melchijah, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people when he said, this is what the Lord says. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine, or plague. But whoever goes over to the Babylonians will live. He will escape with his life. He will live. And this is what the Lord says. This city will certainly be handed over to the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. Then the officials said to the king, This man should be put to death. He is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city as well as all the people, by the things he is saying to them. This man is not seeking the good of these people, but their ruin. He is in your hands, King Zedekiah answered. The king can do nothing to oppose you. 
So they took Jeremiah and put him into the cistern of Melchijah, the king's son, which was in the courtyard of the guard. They lowered Jeremiah by ropes into the cistern. It had no water in it, only mud, and Jeremiah sank down into the mud. But Ebed melech a Cushite, an official in the royal palace, heard that they had put Jeremiah into the cistern. While the king was sitting in the Benjamin gate, Ebed melech went out of the palace and said to him, My lord the king, these men have acted wickedly in all they have done to Jeremiah the prophet. They have thrown him into a cistern, where he will starve to death when there is no longer any bread in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed melech the Cushite, Take thirty men from here with you and lift Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed melech took the men with him and went to a room under the treasury in the palace. He took some old rags and worn out clothes from there and let them down with ropes to Jeremiah in the cistern. Ebed melech the Cushite said to Jeremiah, Put these old rags and worn out clothes under your arms to pad the ropes. Jeremiah did so and they pulled him up with the ropes and lifted him out of the cistern. And Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard. Then King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance to the temple of the Lord. I'm going to ask you something, the king said to Jeremiah. Do not hide anything from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I give you an answer, will you not kill me? Even if I did give you counsel, you would not listen to me. But King Zedekiah swore this oath secretly to Jeremiah. As surely as the Lord lives, who has given us breath, I will neither kill you nor hand you over to those who are seeking your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says. If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and this city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. But if you will not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be handed over to the Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from their hands. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to the Babylonians, for the Babylonians may hand me over to them, and they will mistreat me. They will not hand you over, Jeremiah replied. Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you, then it will go well with you and your life will be spared. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in the palace of the king of Judah will be brought out to the officials of the king of Babylon. Those women will say to you, they misled you and overcame you, those trusted friends of yours. Your feet are sunk in the mud. Your friends have deserted you. All your wives and children will be brought out to the Babylonians. You yourself will not escape from their hands, but will be captured by the king of Babylon, and this city will be burned down. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Do not let anyone know about this conversation, or you may die. If the officials hear that I talked with you, and they come to you and say, Tell us what you said to the king, and what the king said to you. Do not hide it from us, or we will kill you. Then tell them, I was pleading with the king not to send me back to Jonathan's house to die there. All the officials did come to Jeremiah and question him, and he told them everything the king had ordered him to say. So they said no more to him, for no one had heard his conversation with the king. And Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard until the day Jerusalem was captured. Chapter 39 this is how Jerusalem was taken. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army and laid siege to it. And on the ninth day of the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year, the city wall was broken through. Then all the officials of the king of Babylon came and took seats in the middle gate. Nergal Sherezer of Samgar, Nebo Sarsicum, a chief officer, Nergal Sherezer, a high official, and all the other officials of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah, king of Judah, and all the soldiers saw them, they fled. They left the city at night by way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls, and headed toward the Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. They captured him and took him to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, where he pronounced sentence on him. There at Riblah, the king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and also killed all the nobles of Judah. Then he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with bronze shackles to take him to Babylon. 
The Babylonians set fire to the royal palace and the houses of the people and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, carried into exile to Babylon the people who remained in the city, along with those who had gone over to him and the rest of the people. But Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, left behind in the land of Judah some of the poor people who owned nothing, and at that time he gave them vineyards and fields. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had given these orders about Jeremiah through Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard. Take him and look after him. Don't harm him, but do for him whatever he asks. So Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, a chief officer, Nergal Sherezer, a high official, and all the other officers of the king of Babylon sent and had Jeremiah taken out of the courtyard of the guard. They turned him over to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to take him back to his home, so he remained among his own people. While Jeremiah had been confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him. Go and tell ebed melech the Cushite, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I am about to fulfill my words against this city through disaster, not prosperity. At that time they will be fulfilled before your eyes. But I will rescue you on that day, declares the Lord. You will not be handed over to those you fear. I will save you. You will not fall by the sword, but will escape with your life, because you trust in me, declares the Lord. Chapter 3 Therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house, if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. So, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me and for forty years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation, and I said, Their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, They shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. As has just been said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the desert? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief.